Well, LSU women's head basketball coach Kim Mulkey made some comments post game after the SEC championship game that have gone nationwide. They're being talked about on some of the biggest sports talk shows in America. But in terms of what Kim Mulkey had to say, it doesn't matter what those talking heads think. It doesn't matter what I think. And it doesn't matter what you think either. You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's up, y'all? Happy Monday. Thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also check us out on YouTube as well. Just hit that subscribe button, and then you'll get notified as soon as new episodes of the podcast drop. Today's edition of Locked on LSU is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. Well, it seems... Like, controversy and drama just always seems to follow this LSU women's basketball team, and the SEC championship on Sunday was no different. So, of course, we all know a quick recap of what went out on Sunday. LSU falls to South Carolina 79-72, to but the biggest headline really was the the bench-clearing fight that occurred about two and a half minutes before the end of the fourth quarter, before the end of the game. You know, Flage Johnson kind of elbows a South Carolina player, Camila Cardoso, South Carolina's 6'7 center, doesn't like that very much. She shoves Flage to the ground. Both benches clear. Flage's brother jumps from the stands onto the, the scoring table and onto the court. It was just sheer and utter madness. So, of course, head coach Kim Mulkey was asked about it post game and Don Steely was as well. But I want to focus in on what Kim Mulkey had to say because those comments have now been nitpicked and torn apart and discussed and analyzed on social media, on ESPN, on several large digital platforms. I mean, this is is headline news happening, and it has to do with with Kim Mulkey, your your head basketball coach. So this was Kim Mulkey's response to the fight and to Camila Cardoso shoving Flaugé Johnson down to the court. This was what Kim Mulkey had to say post-game that has caused a ton of controversy across the country. No one wants to be a part of that. No one wants to see, to, to see that ugliness. But I can tell you this. I wish she would have pushed Angel Reese. Don't push a kid. that You 6'8", don't push somebody that little. Uh, That was uncalled for, in my opinion. Let those two girls that were jawing, let them go at it. Okay, so when I first heard those comments, my interpretation of it, one, understanding Kim Mulkey and just kind of how she is, uh, my interpretation of it was Kim Mulkey telling Camila Cardoso, again, 6'7", 6'8", against Flage, who is what, like all of maybe 5'5", and 100 pounds, It was essentially Kim Mulkey's way of saying, pick on someone your own size. It was basically Kim Mulkey's way of saying, I wish you would. I wish you would try me. I wish that you would pick on the girl, Angel Reese, that has been picking on you all day. I wish that you would try to go head to head with the girl that is significantly taller and much bigger than Flage Johnson. I wish that you would. I, I, I wish you would. I wish you would. It was Kim Mulkey's way of saying, pick on someone your own size. Because when you are Camila Cardoso and you are all of six, seven, six, eight in her frame, like you're gonna you're gonna be able to beat up most people on the court and off the court as well. She's just bigger than anyone else out there. So that was how I interpreted it from from Kim Mulkey was essentially pick on someone your own size. But the backlash has been and what really the court of public opinion has interpreted that is basically Kim Mulkey telling Camila Cardoso to push down Angel Reese. What a lot of people have interpreted that is Kim Mulkey promoting violence and putting a target on her best player's back. I think that's a little bit ridiculous because that's of course not what she's doing, but I 
understand the misinterpretation. Because just hearing that from Kim Mulkey, if you didn't know Kim Mulkey, if you didn't know how she rolls, I can absolutely see how that could be interpreted as Kim Mulkey putting a target on Angel Reese's back. I can understand why that would be interpreted as, hey, you know, everybody gang up on Angel Reese. Don't hurt Flage, gang up on Angel Reese. Basically trying to promote fighting in the sport. I know that's not what she meant. Like, I know that's not what she meant. She's been a coach a long time. She's won a lot of games and a lot of championships. Okay? She's not promoting violence in the sport. Because I, I think one thing that a lot of the people that are condemning that comment are missing out on is the whole bloviation that she has before that, talking about how it was wrong, how they don't need to have fighting in the sport, so on and so forth. So I think it's silly to think that she was promoting anyone hurting Angel Reese. It's not the truth. That's not what it was. And I think it's crazy to think so, but I, I totally get why it was a bad look. But look, doesn't matter what I think about what she said. It does not matter what you think about what she said. It doesn't matter what Don Staley thinks about what she said. It does not matter what Stephen A. Smith or Shannon Sharp or anyone at ESPN or CBS Sports or Fox Sports or anyone in America thinks. It doesn't matter what any of us think. LSU fans, South Carolina fans, and anyone else. It doesn't matter. It only matters what the girls in that locker room thought about what she said. It only matters what Flage feels about how she feels about what Kim Mulkey had to say there. It only matters how Angel Reese feels about what Kim Mulkey had to say. And Haley Van Lith and Anissa Morrow and every single woman in that locker room who plays for Kim Mulkey and wears an LSU jersey. Those are the only people who matter. Because if Angel had a problem with what Kim Mulkey had to say, now I have a problem with what Kim Mulkey had to say. If Flage uh, took offense to what Kim Mulkey had to say, then now I take offense to what Kim Mulkey had to say. Because those players in that locker room are the only ones that matter. Because now if we have players against coach, now I got a problem. Because you go into the NCAA tournament, I don't need there to be any sort of internal feud in that locker room with the team that has championship expectations. So if you don't like what Kim Mulkey had to say, that's fine. If you had no problem with what Kim Mulkey had to say, that's fine too. But let me just say in the kindest way possible, it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what they think. But there is one thing uh, that seems awfully, awfully clear and obvious to me. And it's not changing anytime soon. And we'll get into that coming up next after just a few words from our sponsors. All right, I want to tell you about Amazon Fire TV. So I love Amazon Fire TV because I have so much access to everything at just my fingertips. I mean, it's your it's your destination for sports. They've got live games, highlights, in-depth analysis, everything sports related that you could be looking for. Plus, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can just plug right into your existing TV. So don't worry about it if you don't have a smart TV, because even if you don't have a smart TV, just plug in that Fire TV stick and you'll get access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. So whether it's opening weekend for baseball, which I'm so excited is quickly approaching at the MLB level or the college basketball tournament coming up in just a couple of weeks, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. So Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, and it's all for free. Who doesn't love that? That also includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues in college conferences as well. So Fire TV Channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and so much more to keep up to date on all of the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. So sports along with any of your other interests. So check out Fire TV Channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me. It is the best. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. 
All right, I also have to tell you about Game Time because Game Time is my go to place for any tickets that I might need, really any event, whether it's a sporting event or a concert or a comedy show, whatever it might be. When I need to buy tickets, my first stop, the first place that I check is Game Time because it's such a fast and easy way to buy tickets for any events that you're going to. There's killer last minute deals, all in prices views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. One thing that I love about Game Time is when you are looking to buy a ticket, the price that you see is the price that you pay. That's one frustration that I have with a lot of third-party ticket sites is you look for a ticket, you find one that's well within your price range, and then you go to check out and you're like, wait, whoa, 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 hold on. Why are all of the fees and taxes just as much, if not more, than the ticket itself? And you end up getting totally bamboozled and probably paying a lot more than you wanted to. But with game time, that is not the case. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKED ON, L O C K E D O N, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, rolling along here, Locked On LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We're part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. So find Locked On Sports Today right now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. So Kim Mulkey getting a lot of heat for what she said after the SEC, uh, SEC tournament championship game. Look, I think it's a bad look. I know what she meant. I don't have a problem with it, uh, but I, I do see the, the, you know, the, the misinterpretation of what she said. I don't have a problem with it because I know what she meant. But again, like I said in the last segment, doesn't matter what I think, doesn't matter what you think. As long as Angel Reese and Flage and the rest of that locker room is still ride or die for Coach Mulkey, that's the most important thing. I don't care what anybody else has to say or what anybody else thinks. But there is one thing that is incredibly clear to me. It's not going to change anytime soon, nor do I think it's ever going to change. And that's the fact that just frankly, nobody likes Kim Mulkey. I, I, let me just put it out there. If you haven't realized it after what now nearly three total seasons at LSU, she's not very well liked. And honestly, I didn't realize that she was such a, a divisive figure before she got to LSU. But I remember whenever LSU hired Kim Mulkey, there is somebody that I know that works in women's basketball. And they told me, hey, look, just a heads up with Kim Mulkey. She's going to win a lot of games. She's going to get a lot of notoriety into your, your basketball program. She's going to win a whole lot of championships, but it comes with a price. It comes with a little bit of a target on your back. And at the time, I thought, okay, yeah, whatever. You know, fast forward three years later, I think that's the case. And let me just say, that's fine. I don't care because Kim Mulkey's not in the business of winning popularity contests, right? Like, I don't care if the, the general public doesn't like Kim Mulkey. I don't care if everything that comes out of her mouth becomes something that everybody wants to pick apart. Really, frankly, I don't. Because what does she do? She wins games. She recruits at a high level. She, she won a national championship. As long as Kim Mulkey is doing all of those things and continues to do those things, gets LSU to the SEC championship game. You're a, you know, top three, four, five seed in the NCAA tournament. You are a championship contender. You're recruiting at a high level. You're getting great players out of the transfer portal. Like as long as all of those things are the case, and of course that she stays within boundaries of the university and she doesn't cross the line of something major. Like what she said about Angel Reese, I, I understand it's kind of a weird thing to say and it's kind of a bad look if you misinterpret what she really meant, but she's not crossing any sort of lines here. As long as she stays within the boundaries and is res 
you know, overall respectful and, and harbors a safe environment and promotes the like positive things within the program, which I believe that she does. I got a problem with it. It's when you start to lose games. It's when you start to miss out on the top recruits. It's when LSU's program takes a step back or when she says something that is really, truly uncalled for, unacceptable and completely over the line. I think we all know just kind of the general idea of what I'm talking about here, right? Like as long as those things are the case, then I don't care if you don't like Kim Mulkey. I really, I genuinely, I do not care. Is it like, is it nice to be liked? Yes. Is it really fun when the entire country is rooting for your team and wants good things for your team? Like, yeah, that feels really good. Like how fun is it whenever people talk about the 2019 LSU team, the football team, like even if they're not LSU fans, even if they're Florida fans or Alabama fans, they talk glowingly about that team like it's fun and it is nice to be liked and it is nice to be supported and it's nice to be cheered on I think it's pretty clear to me as long as Kim Mulkey is the head coach at LSU that's not going to be the case for this team and I don't care because you win games what was she brought here for to win games and to win championships what does she get paid to do win games and win championships and really for the most part what has she done well she's won a lot of games and she won a championship so as long as those things are in the in the cards, then I don't care how people feel about Kim Mulkey. Is she the most likable person in the world? No, she's not. Like, look, I'm an LSU fan. And if, I'm sure you're listening. You're an LSU fan. I think we can all acknowledge she's a bold personality. Like, she says some crazy stuff. Like, she says some crazy stuff. There has been a lot of things that she has said that, frankly, I take offense to or things that I don't agree with. Things that I say, whoa, 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 I wouldn't have said that if I were you. Like, trust me, like, I, I can call a spade a spade. And I think it's totally fine and justified to criticize the coach who coaches your team. But, and like, sometimes, there are some days I don't like Kim Mulkey very much. But then I remind myself, oh, yeah, she wins games. So if you're all hot and bothered about Shannon Sharp saying that Kim Mulkey should be held accountable, like, okay, for what? Did she break a rule? No. She said something that you don't agree with and you thought was kind of weird. Well, what's the accountability for that? What accountability exists for something like that? Like, I very vividly remember Nate Oates putting his hand on and shoving a Missouri player earlier in the regular season. I didn't see any accountability there. Now that warrants accountability. Now that is a no-no. You don't put your hands on another player. Kim Mulkey made a very strange postgame game statement okay it was it was weird i know what she meant but it was weird um i don't really know what a kind of accountability exists for that it's very clear if you don't like kim mulkey you're not gonna like anything that she does and it's the same thing for anything anyone else if you don't like someone you're not gonna like anything they do if you like someone you're gonna like everything that they do i don't like everything that kim mulkey does you might and that's fine no i don't like everything that anyone does i think that's kind of crazy to think but overall, with this, uh, you know, the vitriol on Kim Mulkey, look, if you don't like her, that's fine. I just, like, in terms of accountability and suspension, I don't, I, for what? For what? And if you're an LSU fan that's been hearing all this pushback and you're upset about Kim Mulkey, I get it. I understand because you want your team to be liked. You want your coach to be liked. But who cares? Frankly, who cares? As long as that team would still ride or die for her, as long as that team is together as one and is as united now as they were two weeks ago going into the NCAA tournament, that's what matters. And if they're not, that's what I have a problem with. All right, coming up next week, also had some baseball action over the weekend, some of my takeaways, what I liked, what I didn't. We'll get into that coming up next after just a few words from our sponsors. All right, I want to tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. So whether you are hiring for your small business or you want to find quality professionals that are right for your role for your small business, you're going to have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Plus, LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. 
It gives you access to professionals that you cannot find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within only 24 hours. When LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats, you don't have a ton of time and you don't have a ton of resources to dedicate to hiring someone. So that is where LinkedIn jobs comes in. Two and a half small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. And hey, it's for a reason. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, rolling along here, Locked on LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. LSU baseball takes two out of the three games in their weekend series against Xavier, following falling two to one on Sunday, but taking the games on Friday for nothing and Saturday uh, eight to two. And then, of course, losing Sunday two to one, as I mentioned. A couple of my takeaways. First and foremost, you might have the best starting starting pitching rotation in the country. Like you might have the best starting ro- pitching rotation in the conference. I feel much more confident in saying that. Uh, but my goodness, if you're not getting incredible starting pitching, Luke Holman is unreal. And I will swallow my tongue because I initially said after those first two weeks, I wouldn't move Luke Holman from Saturday to Friday. Okay. I'll wave my hand and say I was wrong on that. Like that, he needs to be on Fridays. <laughs> Luke Coleman, six innings, zero hits, zero runs, only two walks and 10 strikeouts. I mean, he's been so consistent week over week over week that he has been one of the guys, not the one, but one of the guys in that pitching staff that you can say, I know what I'm going to get from him and it's going to be damn good. Saturday, Gage Jump gave you five innings, gave up three hits, zero runs, one walk, and also 10 strikeouts. Thatcher Hurd on Sunday had what I think was his best outing in the 2024 season. It's not the best outing we've seen from him in an LSU uniform, but let's be honest, like Thatcher Hurd got off to a little bit of a rocky start. Now, there were some games in particular that he could have gotten a lot more help defensively, that there were a couple of bad defensive plays or errors here and there. But Thatcher Hurd, I think week over week over week, continues to get better and show better stuff week over week over week. Now, I don't know what it was with Thatcher Hurd. Was it the pressure of being on a Friday night? Was it just trying to get reacclimated into a game setting? Was it he's changing something up and it just took a while to get used to? I don't know what it is, but he is getting better every single week. And we know what Thatcher Hurd is capable of because we saw it. We saw it last year in the postseason, but Thatcher Hurd gave you five innings, which that was another one of his issues in the first couple of weeks of the season was he was giving you two and change or three and change. You can't be getting three innings from your starting pitcher in this league. And we start conference tournament, excuse me, conference tournament, start conference play this weekend. You need more than that. I don't care who you are. Nobody has a deep enough bullpen for their starter to just go two or three innings on a consistent basis. So he gave you five on Sunday. Those that's what you want to start to see. You need to get five. Give up four hits, one run, one walk, and nine strikeouts. So was he go a complete shutout pitcher? No, but best stuff of the season. And I think that that's any of us would take that. You're getting great stuff from Thatcher Hurd. I don't think that we can say that you're not just because you're comparing it to what Luke Holman is doing. And what Luke Holman is doing is Skeens-esque. Now, I'm not going to say he's Paul Skeens, but it's Skeens-esque. Um, the problem Sunday was not Thatcher Hurd. The problem Sunday was you could not make contact with the ball. Like, the problem Sunday was the offense, which is so crazy to me that Throughout the sample size of, what is it now, four weeks, five weeks, whatever it is, throughout our sample size of what we have from LSU baseball, there are days that they just simply cannot miss. And then there are days that they just make stupid decisions at the plate. Like Jay Johnson kind of called his team out a little bit after Sunday's game and said, well, why are we swinging at every single pitch? Why are we making their jobs easy? I looked, it was that Friday night, Thursday, the game against Texas last week. Whenever, whatever day that was, 
I thought LSU was showing great discipline at the plate, and they were running Texas's pitcher's numbers up. That by the end of it, Texas's pitcher, which I don't have the numbers up in front of me, went like three or four innings, 90 pitches. Like that is good discipline. And that's really the, the strategy of trying to beat an opponent that might be, you know, more evenly matched with you than, let's say, an Xavier. They didn't show that on Sunday. They were just swinging out of their shoes. They were swinging for the fences. And look, I love home runs, but singles can win you games too. So Jay Johnson obviously addressed that after the game. I think it'll be something that will continue to be addressed of just continuing to show that plate discipline. Uh, But overall, great weekend of pitching up and down offensively. And something that's going to be interesting to watch is what continues to be your consistent outfield rotation. Because we saw five different starters in the outfield this past weekend. We saw Paxton Kling. We saw Ethan Frey. We saw Mac Bingham. We saw Josh Pearson. We saw Ashton Larson. So we saw a, at least a decent variety of guys get the start in the outfield. Are we going to start to see a more consistent lineup? Or is it really going to be kind of an outfield by committee? We'll see, but something to to, uh, to focus in on as we get into SEC play here coming up this weekend. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you for making Locked in LSU your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up on tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU, a massive recruiting weekend this past weekend for Brian Kelly and the LSU Tigers. So any new news and tidbits that came out from that star-studded weekend, we'll break it all down in tomorrow's edition of Locked in LSU.